Hey everybody, I'm Lizzie Hale from the band Hailstorm, and you are tuned in with Side Jams with Brian Reisman. Greetings everyone, this is Brian Reisman, host of Side Jams, welcoming you to our new episode featuring Sonia Anubis from Cobra Spell, guitarist, a founding Hello. member. You're like the main songwriter too, right? From Cobra Spell, yes. Yes. So, and you've been keeping busy. And you just, didn't you, I think a few, like the last month you played Portugal? Yeah, we played actually um, a tour in Spain and in Portugal. So we played actually just one show in Portugal. The rest was in Spain. So we could like play. Uh, it was in, Lisb in uh, Lisbon and it was a fantastic show. Packed and yeah, would love to come back again. Yeah, you guys were a discovery for me on, on YouTube. Like the YouTube, al YouTube algorithm just popped up addicted to the night. I was like, oh, oh what's wow, this? That's incredible. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed because I never expected that Addicted to Night was gonna be received the way it did. Um mm. I knew that yeah, it's it's a cool song, um, but it's still like eighties heavy metal. Um I didn't know that this style could um grab the attention of so many people. I didn't know that. I thought it was still underground. Cobra spell is underground. We're not going to make make it bigger than that because that's what the style is about. I mean, of course, I have my dreams and I'm a dreamer and I always will fight for it. Though, um, to see that Addicted to the Night has been received so well uh, internationally and discovered by so many different people in different countries is a total honor, definitely. I know, it's almost 700,000 views now. <laughs> I was Seriously, like, that's how I didn't even know that. That's crazy. I mean, what I love about the band is you got this very 80s vibe, but at the same time, I know you're also kind of nature oriented. And you like to exercise and you like to hike and you kind of it's good to take care of yourself. It's sort of almost anti 80s because I remember back in the 80s, you had all these people that were in shape, but they were touring a lot, but they were also partying, which, yeah. you know, how do you, how, I, do you, how do you, how do you find a balance between the two? <laughs> it is, it is very hard, but I'm very disciplined uh, myself with uh, my daily tasks. I, I always have like a list of things that I have to do. And in my list is always included to do certain exercises because I, I believe it's important to, you know, stay healthy on tour, to uh, think about your, um, you know, that you're fit because otherwise you cannot deliver the show that you want to deliver on stage. It's very important that you're, that, that you're complete. <laughs> so, yeah, and it, I, I really look at uh, what I eat, at the exercises that I do. And yeah, and I, besides that, of course, I, I like to party, but not to the point where I completely lose myself. I, I, I like to have control over myself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think everyone should uh, take care of their own bodies because they are doing everything for us and we need our body to, for many, many, many years. So yeah. we might as well take care of it. Well, you know, it's interesting as you see, I see it now with a lot of the 80s rockers, like certain ones got in shape or they quit doing drugs, whatever it was, and some of them didn't. <laughs> and you can just yeah. see it shows up, you know, it affects, it affects your physique and, uh, and how you it can does. handle things. You actually yeah, mentioned the, to me, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the thing is, uh, like with younger people, maybe uh, in a certain age, you can see it. But then 10 years later, you see they're completely messed up because yeah, for a time, yeah, maybe it works because you're young. But um, yeah, it takes its toll, I think. I mean, I'm young myself and I, I wouldn't know because I don't do that stuff. But uh, yeah. I know there are a lot of musicians that used to abuse it. You know, the, you see them. And they became grumpy old people that do not even enjoy what they're doing. And that's sad. Now, as far as exercise, one of the things you told me about is that you, you, you do gymnastics, which... Yeah, I used to do gymnastics. I was curious if, you, if you're still doing that and, and what, kind of, what kind of... I remember doing gymnastics as a kid. You yeah. know, I had a class, but that was a long time ago. And it was things I was good at and some stuff I was just like... I wasn't flexible enough. Like, what were you doing under, under that umbrella of gymnastics? What were you doing? Well, I was doing like tumbling and stuff, you know, this um, tricks that they do on the floor. And honestly, I never did it like professionally. Like I, I always did, uh, well, this last years, I've been mainly doing sports more as of uh, taking a challenge for myself. Because of course it's, you know, if you wanna do a sport at the age that I am, I'm young, but gymnastics, you need to start like when you're six or five years old to, to really become uh, like a, good in a certain level. Um, yeah. I just, pretty much did it because I wanted to learn certain tricks as a challenge to myself and, you know, take away that fear of certain tricks that you can do, for example, like handsprings and uh, backbends and all that stuff. And I, I 
learned a lot of the stuff that I wanted to learn, which I'm very proud of. And um, also I have done like Kung Fu. Uh, I've done it for a year. Um, this I, I stopped right before the tour because I wasn't able to go to the training, obviously, because I was gone for, for so long. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Kung Fu was very fun to learn. I've also done synchronized swimming. Um, actually, synchronized swimming, I've done a lot of competitions with. I, I used to really, really do it seriously. Yeah, like I, I have some medals and stuff. Um, I, I did a lot of swimming, but like uh, normal swimming, you know, back and forth. I don't know how, how to say that, like just the normal, the, the normal swimming. Um, yeah. I, I started like when I, uh, I don't know, uh, like swimming, swimming. So not synchronized, but just normal swimming. I believe I started when I was seven years old or something. And yeah, I've done swimming, synchronized swimming till um, I was probably like 16, I believe. No, yeah. lo- older, maybe 17, something like this. And uh, and so what? So what? Within synchronized swimming, what were you doing? Like, there's different. I think a lot of that's team. Team. It's a team thing. It's not just. I simply... did the team. Yeah, you have like uh, the solo, the duet, and uh, the combo. And the combo is when you do in a group. And yeah. I used to mainly do it in a group. So I had a group of girls, and uh, we did like these shapes on the water and splits. And yeah, it's, it was a heavy but very very fun sport. Definitely. So where did you get the awards from? Like, where did you compete? I competed a lot in the Netherlands, mainly, like nationally. So you're an award-winning athlete and hopefully then become an award-winning musician, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it completely changed. Once, once I discovered music, like everything um, competition-wise didn't really matter to me anymore. I was really starting to get like into music, music, music. And then my world became like, I want to be a musician. And that's what I'm still, um, you know, I'm passionate about well it's interesting because you talk about you know you're doing do kung fu and you've done swimming and you did gymnastics and you know i watch like the videos and i watch your live performances so you're moving around a lot on stage i mean you're very physical did has doing all those different things helped with your movement on stage absolutely absolutely i i do consider like for the movement that i do i do have to do um some stretches before um it's it looks like um sometimes that I'm I mean I do I, I do move a lot and it's maybe even more tiring than it looks like it's like very exhausting I don't feel it when I'm on stage because I have so much adrenaline on stage that I kind of forget about yeah. everything and then I realize that uh, after the show that I'm completely exhausted but um yeah it's a real it's it's like it's like a sport it's it's really really intensive but I love doing it like being on stage is my favorite thing ever and I like to lose all my energy in it. And yeah, there are certain moves that I have to be careful about because I realized that um, I used to do a certain move on stage uh, before, like back when I was in a band before. And um, I, I ruptured my uh, knee tendon. Um, wow. Yeah, like on stage. And it hurt me for a half year long. That's when it started, like when it started healing. And it was it was very bad like it, we have to be very careful about it and that's why it's important to stretch before the show and certainly when you move a lot and i move a lot and that's why i try to really be careful about the moves that i'm doing and yeah kind of stuff but yeah i also have like this last tour um there's certain moves that we do like getting uh, on our knees we, we have yeah. this moment where we get on our knees uh during Ad- addicted to the night actually and I've realized this is actually very painful for my knees. I didn't think that it was going to be, but I think I'm at an age and I'm not that old. I'm young, but yeah, at my age, 20s. <laughs> yeah, but I'm at, at my age already. I'm getting pain in my knees and that's worrying. Like if, if I get pain on my knees, that's a not, not a good sign. So I have to see uh, how I can still do it, but not get this pain in my knees. Yeah. I'm actually going to go get surgery for a torn meniscus in my left knee. Ooh. which is like a basic, it's a basic thing. I mean, I got it like basically like a year ago. I did a lot of PT. They first thought it was a hamstring pull and Ooh. then started doing PT. Uh, and finally I'm like, all right, I was supposed to have it done like a month ago. And because the doctor is busy, I got another doctor. Uh, but you know, now my right knee is getting a little, is getting a little tired because it's compensating for the other knee. I did a lot of physical yeah. therapy and it did get better, but you can only get so much better. You just have to do it. Um, that's more standard. I mean, it's not like a knee replacement. Yeah. I mean, 
uh, so far, I never had like something as heavy as breaking something. I really had like I, I've, I've had injuries, you know, like tendon uh, overstretching. Like I've, I've had an overstretched also hamstring, like on my left hamstring. But this is many uh, yeah. years ago when I was in super nice swimming. I had to do the split, and I went too far, and that hurt very badly. But um, yeah, I mean, on on stage, um, mostly are knee things. Yeah, knee things mainly, and and also my neck. Like I have a lot of neck stuff, but it's uh, it was very bad like this last three years. But it's getting a little bit better because I'm trying to be really cautious about it. I've, I've had a lot of physiotherapy about it too, yeah. like my neck because it was the worst thing for me. It was really bad, and I've had it also before I did music. Like for uh, but the music has made it a little bit worse for me. But yeah, I I'm trying to look at my posture as much as I can. It's very important. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tricky because, yeah, on stage you can do certain things. You have to be careful. I think it was, there was a drummer in one German band once um, that, you know, had, I remember he, I think he had a certain posture he did, and I think he made it look cool, but the way he was reaching over for the hi hat, he had his, his drum set up in a certain way that actually caused back problems later on. Like, you can have cool yeah. stage moves, but those cool stage moves aren't going to help you later uh, if you do a lot of that, or even if you're young, you have to be careful. Yeah, so um, you have to work out in a way that you can make it, that you can actually do it. You know, if you train your knees, I mean, you, you can uh, tr train the tendons and the, the muscles around your knees to be stretchy enough to make certain moves so you don't get um, overstretched in certain uh, positions or that you don't get the injury. I've learned that. And, um, you know, that's what I realized, okay, never force something. When something feels too forced in a certain position, don't go too far. And uh, it's hard when you have adrenaline because you don't really feel that limit. You don't feel where that uh, line is in between. This is too far and this is not too far. So that's why you really have to listen, uh, learn to, un to listen to your body. And that's, that's, the, that's a tricky thing. <laughs> When did you start doing Kung Fu and has that helped you as far as body movement as well? A lot. A lot. It's the most um, versatile um, sport that I've done in my life, truly, even more than synchronized swimming because it involves a lot of different um, things. Like in, it involves uh, flexibility, strength, um, breathing, a lot of breathing. And breathing is super important. Like. Um, breathing is pretty much like 80% of um, your energy, literally. Like your energy comes from what you breathe. Yeah? And, and it's, it's, I, I'm learned, I, I learned a lot from taking Kung Fu and I'm very thankful for it. I can not, uh, not only because it's, it's, it's not only fighting, it's a lot more behind it. And um, yeah, I, I kind of forgot what was the question. I got so much into it that I completely... No, no, that's it. You're explaining it. Um, well, like, I mean, Doro does, I think it's Wing Chun. Like, she has a different yeah, that's, stuff. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also a Kung Fu. I did Liu He Men, which is like more of a basic... Um, it's it's not basic, I mean to say. It's um, the root of Kung Fu. It's like the, the basics of Kung Fu. It's not like a specialized style. It's okay. the, base, the base of Kung Fu, what it's um, based on. And I, I learned a lot from that. And I also did Tai Chi, uh, which is very good for like posture and, you know, balance. And it's also uh, learned a lot from it, like from breathing. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm very thankful. Like uh, I have like this school, like super near me. So whenever I want to go back, I, I can go back and catch some, some more lessons because it's, it's very, very fun. Yeah. So it's not really just about kicking ass. It's about getting in tune with your body. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Like getting in balance with your body and your soul. <laughs> what is what it, for, I mean, uh, as far as Kung Fu, what's been the most, um, and what's what's the biggest revelation you've gotten out of, of of studying that particular martial art? I mean, the breathing thing was very important for me. Certainly, it helped me uh, with a lot of pain that I was having with my muscles because with muscles, uh, a lot of a lot of the pain comes because it needs oxygen and it needs more air and you need to relax. And I had this problem that I I have a lot of tension in me and I've had this for a very long time. And this is what I'm saying. Like recently, I have less pain on my neck which is yeah. like a miracle because I've had pain in my neck for a very long time. And since I took Kung Fu, like um, my, my teacher, which you call him Sifu, 
um, he he teach uh, he teach me how to release like this tension that I have in my neck, and yeah. I learned that with breathing, with stances that I learned, like the kung fu stances, and yeah, and it truly helped. Like I now have more control about my muscles. And the thing is, I uh, I, I believe like the root of the problem was when I did synchronized swimming. It's the complete opposite of what I learned at Kung Fu and synchronized swimming. You have to be like very tense. You have to put a lot of tension in your muscles, which I have, I have put tension in my muscles for very, very long for that reason, because we had to put like shoulders to the back. And, you know, posture was very important in synchronized swimming, like dancing, for example. You have to really like have a yeah. certain posture. And uh, with Kung Fu, it's more like you have to be grounded. You have to like release the tension. Because if you're grounded, nobody can put you down because you put all your weight on the ground. And this is what I learned. Like, you have to ground yourself. I don't know if you, if you understand what I mean. You yeah. just release all that um, tension that you have. Because if someone shakes you, you cannot just fall like, a, like this. Boop! If you're grounded, you can just stay. And this is something extremely important. Like... Um, he compared it like, um, yeah, I mean, with many things. Like, I, 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 I can co go on talking about it way too long. So, <laughs> no, I think it's, I made, it's fine. I That's what I we're here to do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that was something very, uh, very interesting and definitely very um, good to learn from me. So also, I mean, you've talked about going hiking too. Yeah, I, I love. That. You like to get out to yeah. nature. Yeah, I actually did a walk like right before the interview. Uh, it's such nice weather to walk around and it's good to just disconnect from work, from social media, just for or anything like going on. Um, just disconnect, go for a walk and enjoy the nature. I just love doing that. Yes. Well, also because, you know, I mean, I'm a writer, you're a musician. We, especially in the pandemic, we spent a lot of time inside doing stuff. And it's important mm -hmm. to kind of get out there. Um, like right especially when the pandemic hit, like my girlfriend, I mean, I'm, I'm in the suburbs, my girlfriend's in Brooklyn. So I would go in, I would drive somewhere. We start taking walks outside the city, which we hadn't done before, which we need to get back to doing. We did that as a way to just go somewhere, but it's a yeah. good idea because we get disconnected. I mean, I love being near, near in cities, but you can get disconnected when you're sitting in front of a screen a lot, or you're indoors a lot from everything else that's out there. Yeah, it's like you, you all of a sudden get into some kind of like too much information state. Like I have that when it's just too much and you become very unproductive. And you know, what, what is the point of standing in front of a screen or um, doing something way too long, but you're not getting anywhere? Like it means that your body needs a break, your, 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 your brain needs a break. Like give it, give it some fresh air, like... Um, and and it's it's fun to just visit some nice nature uh, nature places like there's a lot of uh, forests here in the Netherlands and I I enjoy just like going there like with a car and just walking a little bit around sometimes with my father like I I I, I live at my father's home so we we uh, sometimes go together and make a walk in the nature and I really really enjoy it yeah yeah it's good now sounds like you know and, and it's good because now you can bring all this stuff. It gives, refreshes you, and then of course, with all the activity, it's helping you. Hopefully, it's going to help you on stage with all this other stuff. Because it makes it makes you think. You know, um, it it gives you time to think about what's going on, and, and that, that's very important to just take a moment to think without a phone in your hand or without a screen in front of you or people around you. Like, just take a moment for yourself and think about what's going on, or not think at all. Just enjoy the moment. So I mean, obviously, you, physical activity is good for you. There are there other things you like outside of music. Other things that, yeah, I mean, besides uh, something in music that I do like a lot, like I also do is like I play a lot of synthesizers. I really like to play with uh, my MIDI controller, and mm. I mean that's music related. I I do write a lot of synthesizer oriented music. Um, yeah, aside outside of music, um, I do enjoy like play around, playing around with makeup, like just creating looks, like dressing up. I, uh, I'm i really into that kind of stuff. <laughs> like I said, I think it's kind of like the artist side of me really likes to dress up and try out um, cool things and dancing. I'm just really like to do active things. I, I'm this kind of person. 
And with makeup too, I mean, I noticed you try different looks. I mean, that was the big thing about the eighties, right? It's like, mm -hmm. but you're doing it, you're not really necessarily doing it in the, there was sort of the hair band kind of glam thing, but you're doing it a little different, you know? In Cobra Spell, you mean? Yeah. I mean, we do have like a certain style, definitely. It's, um, it's kind of Cobra Spell, you know, we have like a sleazy yeah. touch mixture of Judas Priest, mixture of Cinderella, mixture of like, you name it. I just, yeah, yeah. yeah I have like this kind of idea of Cobra Spell being this sleazy, heavy metal 80s band. And, um, we want to be unique with what we do, but we want to pay homage to the styles that we look up to in a way that Cobra Spell can still uh, make something that works in this, uh, in these days. So, yeah. um, I kind of have like this aesthetic that I really like. You can definitely see it in the music video of Addicted to the Night. It really represents what Cobra Spell is. And also in the cover of Anthems of the Night, like I have really thought about exactly every single detail, like, all these colors, like all these things that are going on, like I, I have a whole mood board about it because I have like a vision. And um, yeah, of course, I think the image of Cover Spell is, is very important. And yeah, what can I say? It's, it represents the 80s, but with a little modern touch. Uh, the makeups are not like or original 80s makeup. Like in, if it would be like 100% 80s, we would have like a, a little bit different but um, we yeah. enjoy doing our makeup in our own ways. Like, I don't like to say to uh, an, uh, like Angelina, hey, do your makeup like that. I don't do that. Like, she can do the makeup the way she wants. Like, <laughs> Cool. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a very cool conversation for sure. And you're clearly very focused and you clearly have a plan. Yeah, I'm very, uh, I like the details. I like to know what I'm doing. 